We're going to continue our discussion on inductance of a three-phase line, but today we're going to focus on unsymmetrically spaced conductors. Now, last video we saw uh, conductors that were evenly spaced out in any equilateral triangles. I'm going to talk about uh, what I mean by this unsymmetrical spacing in a bit. Uh, but before we go there, just a quick recap. This is something you've all seen before, so I'm not even going to go into that in depth. I've just written this formula here because we're going to be using it. Uh, this is once again the same formula that we've derived uh, for a flux linkages of a conductor K in a group of conductors, in a group of N conductors. And uh, we've spoken about uh, how the, for internal, uh, to account for internal flux, how the radius changes and all of that's been discussed in videos earlier. We even use the same formula for the single phase circuits as well as for the uh, symmetrically spaced three phase line last time. So that's written here, we're gonna be using this. So let me get into um, what we saw last time. So last time um, we had, this is this was our transmission, uh, transmission line um, tower and we had three evenly spaced out conductors for phases A, B and C and the distance between them was the same D. Since the distance was the same, the flux linkages in this conductor due to currents in phase C and B was the same as it would be in this conductor due to these two conductors and so on. Therefore, it was since the flux linkages were the same, the inductance was the same and it was an easier calculation and it all made sense. We had a balanced three-phase uh, line. But let's consider another configuration. This time, we're gonna say that due to whatever design requirements, our lines are not symmetrically spaced out. So you have your um, conductor for phase A, then you have your conductor for phase B, and then you have your conductor for phase C here, and they have their supports on the transmission line like this. If I just look at the conductors, if I just pull them out, so what I'm saying is you have your phase A conductor, phase B conductor, and your phase C conductor. So that's phase A, B, and C. Since the distances between them are not the same, let's say the distance between these two is distance D1, 2, between these two is D2, 3, and between these two is D3, 1. Since these distances are not the same, the flux linkages on each of them is going to be different. So the flux linkages on conductor A is going to be the summation of the flux linkages due to currents flowing through conductor A, which is going to be a uh, ln of one over dS. Then you have the uh, flux linkages due to current flowing in, in phase B, and that's going to be this distance. And then the uh, flux linkages due to uh, current in uh, conductor C and that's going to be uh, separated by this distance that's going to be impacted by this distance and for B it's going to be different and for C it's going to be different and since the flux linkage is going to be different your inductances are going to be different since the inductance is going to be different we're going to have an unbalanced system because your currents due to different inductances flowing through each of them is going to turn out to be different then well, how do you solve that problem? Because in, we would want to have a balanced system so we can design it properly. We can size the conductors the same way um, and we can predict the, uh, uh, the outcome of this uh, transmission line and analysis um, accurately. So for that, we use something called transposition. And let me draw that out before I go ahead and explain that. So this is going to be conductor uh, for your phase uh, A and I'm going to explain why I am changing the position of this. This is your phase B and let's draw out phase C. So 
So what I'm going to say is this is going to be position one. So let's counter that with or let's relate that to this position. This position here is position two and this position here is position three. Therefore, you see how I made the distances D1, 2. That's between position 1 and 2. The distance between position 2 and 3 is D2, 3. And between 3 and 1 is D3, 1. So this is position 1. This is position 2. And this is position 3. So our transmission line has to go from this point all the way up to this distance, right? This is the total distance our transmission line is traveling. This distance, so at a distance d1 by 3, or rather d by 3 basically, what we do is we change the position of our conductors. And this total thing is transposition. What we're doing in transposition is we're just changing the position of our conductors. So if your phase A is here for the first one third of the uh, distance, it goes to position two. So it goes to this position. And then in the last third of the distance, it goes, goes to position here. So we are physically changing the position of your phase conductors. So over a distance, what happens is this conductor uh, for phase A has been in all of the three positions. So the average flux linkages over this distance D comes out to be the same and therefore the inductance over this distance for each of these conductors comes out to be the same. And that's why we do this. That's why we do transposition. And we're going to derive the formula using this, um, uh, using this assumption that an unsymmetrical line has been transposed. And what we're going to get is the average inductance per phase. So we're going to first find out, we're going to find out the uh, flux linkages for uh, phase A in positions 1, 2, and 3. And that's going to be the same as the flux linkages for position uh, for uh, for conductor B because it's going to be transposed in all these three positions and the same thing for conductor C. So let's do flux linkages for phase A when it is at position 1. If you look at this formula, it's going to be D, uh, sorry, 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 and then you have your summation here. So your uh, flux linkage due to current within that conductor A, that's affected by the distance dS, plus you have your flux linkage due to current in uh, phase B. Now, when uh, conductor A is in position one, the distance between A and B is position one and two, so that's D one and two, that comes here. The flux linkages in uh, conductor A due to current in conductor C is I of C times ln of 1 over. Now, what's the distance when conductor A is in position 1? It's between position 1 and 3. That's the distance between uh, conductors A and conductor C. So that's D3, 1. We're going to follow the same logic and, and relate to this point now where your conductor A is in position 2. So in that case, what happens is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 I of A ln 1 over dS. That remains the same because the uh, distance, uh, yeah, the internal distance or the self GMD remains the same. Then you have I of B. In this case, the distance between A and B is between positions 2 and 3. So what would we have? You would have D2, 3 and in the same way we would have, so this is between 1 and 2, so that becomes 1, 2. In the same way, we would have lambda A of 3, 2 into 10 to the power minus 7, I of A ln of 1 dS, plus IB 
ln of 1 over d. Let's see here now. So your conductor A is in position 3 and your conductor B is in position 1. So that makes it 3, 1. And between C and A, uh, it's C is in position 2, A is in position 3. So that's D2, 3. And all of this is going to imply that the average is for A is A1, A2, A3, these three flux linkages over 3. So this implies that your, so from here we're going to carry it forward here now, your average flux linkage for conductor A is going to be a summation of all of these three divided by three. So I can write that as two into 10 to the power minus seven divided by three. If I sum all of these three, I get three I A ln of one over D S plus, um, so I can take I B common here sorry, not three because the lawns are different, right? So IB is common and then I get lawn of one over D2 plus lawn of one over D2, three plus lawn of one over D3, one. You know lawn of A plus lawn of B plus lawn of C can be written as lawn of ABC. So then that is one, two, two, three, three, one. The same way I take I of C common I, all of these lawns are added, can be written inside as a multiplication. So again, I'm going to write them in the same order just to maintain symmetry. So when you sum all of these, you get this divided by three. I have the three outside. Now we know after transposition, we're going to have a balanced system. That's the whole reason we're doing transposition. So we know that for a for balanced system we're going to have i of a plus i of b plus i of c is equal to zero which implies i of b plus i of c is equal to minus i of a so you can see what i'm going to do here we have these this two terms are the same so we can take that out and then we're going to have i of b plus i of c I'm going to replace that by negative i of a. So this implies that we have average of a is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7, 3, 3 i a ln of 1 over d s minus i of a ln of 1 over d 1, 2, d 2, 3, d 3, 1. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take 3 i of a out. So when you take 3 i of a out, you're going to get average of a is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7, 3 times 3 i of a. Inside the brackets, you're left with ln of 1 over ds minus 1 by 3. i of a goes out, but there was no 3 here, so we take 1 of 3. ln of d12, d23, d31. And then we go down this three and this three cancel. I'm going to write the next step and I'm going to hope, uh, rather I'm going to be sure that you're going to understand it if you've seen all the last videos, because what's the next step? The next step is this. We're going to take one by three inside we can do that because we've seen before a ln b can be written as equal to ln of b to the power a, right? So we're going to take this 1 by 3 inside. And now, again, if you've seen all the last videos, you should know what my next step is already. We're going to do... We're going to combine ln of a minus ln of b as uh, ln of a over b. So then that becomes 
d1 2 d2 3 d3 1 to the power 1 by 3 over ds so that's your flux linkages this is weber turn per meter and from here we can get our l a is going to be nothing but 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 la is nothing but your flux linkages over your current through that phase so i'm going to remove that average word here because i'm going to include that in the explanation if this is the average inductance per phase it's going to be 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of d12 d23 d31 over ds cube root of this and this is going to be henry per meter I'm going to also write this down in a little bit more legible way. So we're going to have 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of d equivalent over ds henry per meter where d equivalent is nothing but d12, d23, d31 cube root of that which is basically uh, a multiplication of all the distances between all the three conductors cubed and this is also called equivalent spacing between conductors of a three phase line so this is the formulation that i wanted to get this is equal to lb is going to be equal to lc because this is the average inductance per phase for a transposed line this is how you calculate the inductance so what we've seen here is if we have an unsymmetrical space three phase line we assume or we rather uh, derive the uh, transposed inductance and that's the average inductance for each phase and that's the same uh, because of the transposition so what I'm going to leave you with this is a sample problem that I want you to solve that's going to have a transposed uh, or rather an unsymmetrical line and I'm going to I'm going to say that you're going to imagine that going to be uh, that's going to be uh, transposed and find out the average inductance so let's say these are the three conductors spaced like this the distances between them um let's say this is 10 feet this is 20 feet and this is 10 feet that's your a that's your b that's your c um let me say that the radius is 0 0.04 feet for all conductors and you're going to find for me what is the average inductance per phase so this should be very simple you're going to just plug in the numbers in this equation right here and uh, get the answer for me and uh, let me know what the answers you got uh, in the comment section below if there was anything you did not understand in this explanation in this video please let me know as well i'll try to explain it uh, once again, you can just send me an email at nimish at movingelectrons.com or leave your comments below and um, I'll try to explain it. Uh, I think it was relatively very simple. We've seen the similar explanation before as well. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, wrap up our inductance uh, formulations. I think this is going to be the last of the videos in this uh, on this topic and we're going to start on uh, capacitance in the next video. Uh, so hope to see you then. Uh, take care and bye now.